So when you've got a scene that you want to to render, uh, what we do is we save that out as individual image files. So to do a preview render, uh, if you're just working with just working out the timings of it and everything, you can get this window here saved out as a video file by using Play Blast. So I'm right clicking in this this timeline here. Uh, I've got a few options in there. I'm using the H.264 to get an MPEG version of it. I've changed the display size to use the render settings. So that's using my 16.9 size and changing the scale of that there as well. I can also browse to find where I want to save it uh, within my system and I can change the name of that uh, within here as well. So I change the movie file name, I press save to file and play blast and that will run through it without actually processing. So this is the quickest way to get an example render so you can get the timings of this and you can get a video file and you can start working with that. Uh, once it's done it normally opens it up for me here. So I've got that. So this is something that I can give to the editor straight away. We say okay work out the timings of that, put it in edit suite and we get the preview render as well. But it does have all this information in the background. When I want to do my final render um, I might bring that back to this chart. So this isn't a piece that is really set up for a final render but I can press render on this and see what I get. So that might be something I'm going to composite somewhere else uh, but a single render file will come from this render icon here. So that's to render a single image. If it's rendering and I want to stop because it's taking too long I can press escape and that will stop it. But what I really want to do is set it up so I can render a sequence of these. Uh, first of all to do that I will um, look at the render settings that come from here. It's got a little cog on it. Um, the common tab is the first one to look at. There I can define the image format I'm going to tell it to work with PNGs uh, and whether it's a single frame or not. So this one here, frames slash animation extension, I'll change that to be name underscore hash dot extension. What that means is it changes that hash symbol into a number for the sequence of images you're working with. And then I say which frames I want to work with. And this animation actually stops or the bus has left the scene by about frame 48. So I'll just do 1 to 48. Um, and that will define the amount of images that I'm going to get it to, to render. You have the camera. Which camera am I rendering? I'm actually rendering camera 1 because that's set up for me as it is there. So I'll change that. And then you have the presets. We're working to uh, HD 540, which is ample. Uh, if you change that to 1080 in height with the aspect ratios maintained, uh, it will actually take four times as long to render because you're actually doing four, amount, four times the amount of pixels. So, if you have got a very, uh, if it's rendering very quickly, you can do that. But I'd advise you to to try it at this pace, uh, the pace that it will come out at with that HD setting as well. After that, you've got the Arnold render settings. Generally, a good idea not to change these too much um, unless you're getting a very grainy scene. Um, and you, that's not what you're after. There is an adaptive sampling setting, which you, if you enable, it will actually up the levels of sampling where it needs it. Um, but I generally leave it on the the lower sampling because everything you add on to here will give you a greater need for uh, time in renders. Uh, finally, I'd save that. We do have an option of batch rendering. So if you're on the machines upstairs, you can try batch rendering. Uh, but if you're rendering on a single machine, I'm going to go to the rendering selection here. Uh, we go to the render tab. Uh, and if we want to render it locally on our own machine, we can do render sequence. If we do have a render farm operating. We've got batch render or when we've got cube running, we'll have a cube tab up here, which we can work with as well. When that's online, we'll explain that to you. But for now, you do render sequence. Uh, and there is an option on that as well. Um, generally, you don't need to do anything on that. But render sequence will tell it to render each frame for you. And that will process it 
for you in this sequence. It will run through. It's not a hugely complicated scene. If it had a lot of glass or reflective properties in there, it would take a lot longer. Um, but this is designed as a very simple system and then that should save each of these frames out into your folder. Um, if you set up your project within Maya, your project folders, um, it will give you a, uh, a folder called images which will show you where that is. So if I go back to this, so inside the images folder, uh, this is the one it just rendered here and it's already started on the second one as well. So that comes in, the, this one's zero bytes because it's still processing it, it's actually made the file name before it's actually rendered it. So once it's done in Maya, uh, it will save that as a final file. Uh, and as we were demonstrating earlier, my workflow is to import these into After Effects uh, and either make a video file from them here file import uh, so we've got bus shadow this one's still on number three still on zero bytes it knows it's a PNG sequence I can open that um, and if I close down that composition window uh, and say new comp from selection uh, it makes a very short composition but I know it's still rendering so if I do go to the render settings here, composition settings, I can actually change the duration of that. Uh, I'm going to put 250 for now, and I have a, a gap afterwards. So that means I, I kind of see that in my, my scene here, and it will start moving. It's moving very slowly to start with. But as I go forward and as it's rendering more of these, I can tell it to reload that footage. If I highlight it and reload that footage, and you can see it's made another frame, so I can expand that out as I go forward. Um, and so when that's finished and I reload the frames, it will bring those in. It's complaining because it's got that kind of zero, uh, zero sized file in there, so it's not computing that very well. Uh, if I want to make this into a video file, I can say add to render queue. Uh, here I can tell it what type of video file I want, um, output module, tell it which codec to use. I'm on a Mac and I'm using Apple ProRes, but if you go to the, go to the format options you can change that into uh, whatever you, you need to use. Um, so I'll just escape out of that one, cancel, and then also where you're going to save it to, set the output to find the file folder you want to save it to uh, and save it in there. Uh, then it's a matter of pressing render and it will render that sequence for you uh, into a video file. Also if you use something like Premiere, if you use Premiere, uh, you can save this as an After Effects project uh, and you can import that After Effects project and tell it which composition you want and then it's an updatable clip within that. So it's quite a neat workflow of working with as well.